And here we are on the user interface of the WD MyCloud PR4100, otherwise known as the WD MyCloud Pro. So, as again, we've looked at the two bay quite a while ago, but there have been updates since we've last looked at this. Now, full disclosure, as I already mentioned, there is a follow-up video in the works uh, to this regarding Plex, um, and that will be utilizing this, but you may notice this is suggesting there's 4.67 file um, gig of files, and these are movie files that we're going to use on our Plex um, showcase later on. But for now, as you can see, this is pretty much what you're seeing as soon as you log into the device. You go by that link I mentioned earlier on, and as you can see on screen, it's a little bit more chewable, and by that I mean it's all kind of quite streamlined. I'm not going to say this is difficult. It really isn't. Cloud devices, of course, is if you want to synchronize with other network attached storage or cloud-based um, synchronization. Users, the number of users you've set up or accessing, and of course, apps are the apps that you are adding. So if we look at any of these little things here on the desktop here, if we go to diagnostics, we can see a bit more information about the four drives, the temperature of each drive, the fan speed on the rear, the RAID, and all that kind of stuff. And again, it's quite I'm not going to use the word basic, that's a bit mean, but it's definitely a little bit more um, simplistic. So here we are at the firmware, and of course we can double check if there's any new firmware, and at this size, it's got the latest firmware available right now from WD. Um, if we move forward, we can see the overall capacity on those drives, and again, this was fully populated with 4 TB drives, um, with some of the space already taken, and in the RAID 5 that we've got set up on the device, the result is 11.8 TB currently available. Network access, unsurprisingly, means the amount of um, information being sent to and from in terms of network um, activity. If we go a little bit further, we can see a much more basic breakdown than you'd find on other NADIs of the CPU consumption and, of course, the memory being used right now. So again, I've always said that Synology and Drobo are by far the most user-friendly, simplistic user interfaces currently out there. But... This really is one to beat. If you're someone that doesn't really want to get to grips with technicalities and just want a set up and forget box, this could well be the device for you. Um, moving forward, we go into the users section here, and this is where we can create individual users. And each of these users can have their own um, restrictions and permissions. So right now, admin is, of course, the super user who can do everything. If you want to add a new user, so we'll create a new person here, and there's our guide telling us how to do it. But let's go without a guide. I'm going to travel without a net. So let's give this person a name. We're going to call them Robbie 2. And again, we're going to give them the name Robbie. We're going to go with Robbie. We're going to go with the email. And you guessed it, Robbie. Actually, we should probably give it a real email. We'll come up with a fake one for now. Hello, YouTube at news. There you go. At news.com. And the password, we'll give it any old password now. I'm going to go for the imaginative password. And now we can get into the device. Apparently it's not happy with the fact I've spelt that differently. And we're in, and we've created another user. Now, Robbie 2, because I'm a super user, I can now change what they can do. So if we create another group, and we'll call this group managers, and we'll add that group to the management group, Managers, we can now deem what access they have and to what. So here we can completely um, change their profile if we want and add more. We can view what the device looks like from there. And we can change what they can read and write or what they can delete or anything of that manner. So deny access means at the touch of one button, we can completely deny access to this user. Now again, we can add different uh, amount of data they can create. We can give them a certain amount of storage and all of these indiv individual users will have their own login to the WD Cloud. So the information we just created for our new account means that that user will only be able to see the folders that we give them permission to and the only amount uh, give them a certain allocated amount of storage. So if we give this user 10 gigabytes of storage or gigabits even or whatever, now gigabyte, what am I saying? 10 gigabytes of storage. And here we, here we have our other user. And again, this person can now log in to this device with the amount of security and access that we're prepared to grant for them. So that's really user account creation is that straightforward. And again, all of these users will access via the same portal, the same um, WD MyCloud access point, but all of them will have their own logins, their own folder structure, but the super user will be able to see everything. 
So that's really the creation of individual users because this device does give you a full file explorer access. And once you set this device up as a network drive uh, on your local machine, such as a Windows machine here might have network drives. There's a multitude of different NATs that I've had connected in the past. You'll be able to add this device to this network so it appears and thereby you can log in under those details. So if we look for a new network drive, so we'll do a map network drive. See if it will let us find it. We'll browse the network. Oh no, we're on a different network, aren't we? Sorry, let's have a quick look here. Sadly, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you that today because the recording PC is on a slightly different network to the device you're seeing. It's different enough that I can't show you that feature, but take my word for it, you can add the um, WD PR4100 as a network drive. Next, shares. What shares does, it lets you have share rights and share abilities for individual folders. So for example, Robbie2, there's all his information, uh, account we've just created, and this lets us not only give him certain kinds of files, but how he can distribute his files. Individually, we can also allocate individual um, sharing privileges to files and folders, not just users. So it's great to have this amount of control readily available. We can create a brand new one, if we so wish, and this would be a test two. Oh no, we can't do that, let's get rid of that space. And now we create a new share description, where it lives and what we can put inside. Next, we can move over to apps. Now, for those that have watched my previous videos, you know that I've come down pretty hard on WD with regards to its app center. I'm not saying they listen to me, but they definitely listen to someone because they have added several new apps. There still aren't as many as you would find on a Synology or a QNAP, but there's still a fair few. And as you can see on the left, I have added some of the heavy hitters. Peer-to-peer -peer downloads, FTP downloads, and HTTP downloads. In other words, a multitude of means with which you to download your files between communities, friends, or just online, be legal. iTunes server gives us the ability to set up a music server to be picked up uh, by other devices over DLNA. DLNA media server moves beyond music, and not just music, but also pictures and video to be distributed to other devices on the network. And of course, we're talking about smart TVs, we're talking about laptops, tablets, smartphones, the works, Sonos, Bose, and what this will do is this lets us make the device DLNA accessible. So next, Amazon S3, this gives us the ability to synchronize with an Amazon S3 um, account. I believe Elephant Drive and Dropbox are available and you can synchronize the content of the NAS with these cloud platforms and thereby back up the data that's on those or back up individual files that live on the NAS to those platforms. Elephant Drive, exactly the same thing, but a different uh, brand and of course, Plex Media Server, and we're gonna save this for the next video, but take my word for it, still to date, and I know I keep banging on about it, the WD PR4100 is pretty much unbeatable at this price threshold in terms of a Plex Media Server. Synology and QNAP, they got some great NASs out there, but none of them can produce, none of them have produced a Plex Media Server that can rival this bad boy for both transcoding and general output, as well as 4K and 1080p in Plex something the other devices just aren't able to do for the Plex Media Server application. But we'll talk about Plex another day. Now, cloud access is where we set up the ability to access the NAS over the internet, not just the network, but access outside of your network, so anywhere in the world. And again, you can create individual access points for each user, as well as admin and general uh, staff, if you will, in our little management click we've created earlier on. Now, to get it, you have to access it the first time via the network and make sure you get the code. But apart from that, it is very, very similar indeed to other NAS brands. So if you have used a network attached storage device before, particularly from Synology or QNAP, this will not come as a surprise. Next, we have backups. Now, there are so many ways in which you wanna back up your data, both uh, on your host device and your client devices with the NAS. USB backups utilizes the USB ports on the NAS where you can create a system where at a certain time of day or utilizing the one-touch copy button, you can back up the contents of an external drive onto the NAS or vice versa. So if you utilize an external drive or a USB flash key on a regular basis and you want to back up 
that USB, you can access, you can back up the contents of the USB to the NAS regularly or using the one touch copy button. Alternatively, if you've got a large enough external drive, you know, like a two T, you know, a two bay with a couple of tens inside, you can back up the contents of your NAS entirely or just an individual folder directly from the NAS onto the USB, giving you a local long-term backup that you can store elsewhere. So it's quite versatile in that degree with regards to USB backup. But that isn't the only thing you can do. Remote backups give you access, the ability to back up your NAS both over the internet and the network. Make sure you've got the bandwidth and the upload speed. Internal backups are ones where you create backups within the NAS system to another folder or drive. Cloud backups, unsurprisingly, are backing up over the cloud to other WD devices or more. And camera backups, as you can imagine, are ones utilizing camera systems to back up directly to the device and vice versa. So with backups, you've got a multitude of different means there to back up. And remember, the idea of this device is that although it's not going to do the hundreds of things that a Synology or QNAP can do, it can still do between five and ten things very well indeed. And uh, if anything, I hope what this guide is showing you so far is it's not difficult. Everything is made in a very easy, chewable, friendly way. It's the same with RAID. The RAID well, you can change the RAID mode whenever you need to. It may delete. If you RAID down, you can run the risk of losing data. But setting the RAID up for the first time will be semi-autonomous, and it will let you set it up almost immediately. The same with auto-rebuild. If a drive fails and you remove one of the drives and you introduce a new one, you can set it up that it will automatically rebuild the RAID. And if every moment counts to you, this is well something you should be taking heed of. Next, you can look at disk status where you can see the health of individual drives. And again, smart data gives us much more thorough reading on the drive of any problems. iSCSI, of course, is if you want to create a network accessible drive that is visible as if it was a locally attached drive. So if you create an iSCSI target, the result is that other devices, if they connect to it, will treat it like a local drive, like a C drive on a PC. The result being that most software will then be able to read and write to this iSCSI disk as if it was your local C drive. Of course, that will depend heavily on your network speed, uh, the performance on any software that you install on it, but it's still great to have that option. And volume virtualization, unsurprisingly, is when it maps virtualized um, iSCSI targets, and it creates basically um, copies and duplicates of this virtualized data. So again, lots of storage options. And finally, in the settings, we can change pretty much anything we want. As you would expect, everything from energy saving to LED lights and more can all be altered and changed. You can change IP, you can uh, enable firewalls, you can enable dynamic DNS, it's all, and, and attaching UPS. There's so many things you can do with these network settings. And again, this is where things get technical. It's one of the few areas on WD where you start to see some real technical bits and bobs. In terms of media, again, you can create uh, with your media server, you can rescan, add drives, and again, sync with your iTunes server that you created earlier on and keep track, as well as see which devices are accessing. So the utilities, of course, these are the ones where you can do bench tests and checks on your drives, as well as checking more than just the data. You can check the power and maintain the device in the background. Notifications, unsurprisingly, are just if you want to have notifications sent to you via different means or up here via these other little pop-ups that we'll go through in just a second. Of course, firmware update is where we find the latest firmware for our WD. Now, at the top, as you can see, this symbol here lets us know if there's any USB drives connected. Over here, this is where we get our notifications about what's going on with the device. Over here is when you want our help and guides and support. And finally, here is where we reboot, hibernate, and do more with the device. And remember, every user will have their own individual access point on this device. Depending on the amount of um, permissions and access you give each individual user, what they will see will differ greatly. Alternatively, if you create a couple of iSCSIs or some maps and network drives individually to folders, you can let some users only see those and not have access to this back end of the WD. But next video, I'm hopefully going to be showing you more and more about the Plex Media Server application on this NAS and what makes it so good. But do check out the other apps that you can see here on screen. There are more than there used to be. And if you are looking for a great starter NAS, but moreover, the very best Plex Media Server NAS out there, as well as supporting things like Apple Time Machine, Mac Network Drives, Surveillance, and more. And don't forget about Surveillance using the Milestone software. 
then do check out the WD MyCloud PR4100. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to buy from Span. Visit me on As Compares and see me on Twitter via at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.